Welcome to an example of integration using partial fraction decomposition. Before applying partial fraction decomposition though, we should verify that basic u substitution won't work. Notice in this case, the numerator is degree three and the denominator is degree two. So while it might be tempting to let u equal the higher degree part of the numerator, notice that differential u would be nine x squared plus eight x plus one times dx and this does not fit the form of our integral. Next, before we apply partial fraction decomposition, notice how the degree of the numerator is not less than the degree of the denominator. And when performing partial fraction decomposition, if the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator, we must perform long division first. So let's start there. We would have three x cubed plus four x squared plus x minus six divided by x squared minus one. Now to begin, we want to know what times x squared would be equal to three x cubed, which would be three x. So we'll put three x over the x term, multiply this term and the divisor. So three x times x squared would be three x cubed, three x times negative one would be negative three x, which we'll put under the x term here. We're performing long division. We now need to subtract this, but instead of subtracting, we're actually gonna add the opposite instead. So we can change this to addition as long as we change the sign of the two terms inside the parentheses. So if I change this to plus, this would be negative and this would become plus. So notice how now so now when we add, instead of subtract, let's go ahead and bring down the four x squared. The x term would be four x. Let's also bring down the minus six. And now for the next term in the quotient, we want to determine what times x squared would give us four x squared. And that would be positive four. So the next term is plus four. And now again, we're going to multiply this term in the quotient and the divisor. So four times x squared is four x squared. Four times negative one would be minus four. Again, we'll subtract by adding the opposite instead. So we'll change the sign here to plus, change the sign here, and change the sign here. Notice when we add down, we bring the four x down, and this would be minus two. It's okay to have a degree one remainder, because our divisor is degree two. So what we've discovered so far is this integral can be written as the integral of three x plus four plus a remainder, which we'll write as the quantity four x minus two divided by the quantity x squared minus one. So now we can easily integrate the first two terms but we're still left with this rational expression. So again, we might try u substitution by letting u equal x squared minus one, and then differential u would be two x dx. And so while we could actually use this substitution, if we broke this fraction up into two separate fractions, meaning, meaning we could write this as four x divided by the quantity x squared minus one minus two divided by the quantity x squared minus one. So this u substitution would help us integrate this part here, but not the second fraction. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and leave it in this form here, and then perform partial fraction decomposition on this rational expression. So let's go ahead and do that on the next slide. So now we're just gonna take this rational expression here and write it as a sum or difference of fractions that will hopefully be easier to integrate. So to begin, let's rewrite this and factor the denominator. So we would have the quantity four x minus two divided by, this is a difference of squares. So we have x plus one times the quantity x minus one. And because our denominator contains two distinct linear factors, we're gonna write this as a sum of two separate fractions where we'll have a constant divided by the first linear factor plus a constant divided by the second linear factor meaning we'll have a divided by the quantity x plus one 
plus b times the quantity x minus one. So once we determine the values of a and b, we can rewrite this rational expression as this sum. So for the next step, we're going to clear the denominators from this equation by multiplying both sides of the equation by the least common denominator, which would be the quantity x plus one times the quantity x minus one. Notice on the left side, x plus one over x plus one and x minus one over x minus one simplify out, leaving us with just four x minus two equals on the right side, notice in this first product here, one factor of x plus one simplifies out, leaving us with a times the quantity x minus one. And then for the second product here, one factor of x minus one simplifies out, leaving us with plus b times the quantity x plus one. This is called the basic equation, which we now want to solve for a and b by selecting convenient values of x. For example, Notice if we let x equal positive one, this product here would be zero. So if x equals one, we'll substitute one for x, that would be four minus two or two equals, again if x is one, this would be zero, plus b times the quantity one plus one, or two b. Notice here we can determine that b equals one. And now to determine the value of a, we'll select x equals negative one, which would make this factor zero, and therefore this product zero. So if x equals negative one, this would be negative four minus two, that's negative six equals, this would be a times negative two, or negative two a, and again this would be zero. Notice how here if we divide both sides by negative two, we can determine that a equals three. So now if we substitute one for b, and three for a, we can rewrite this rational expression as this sum. So we can write this integral here as the integral of three x plus four, plus since a is equal to three, we would have three divided by the quantity x plus one, plus since b is one, we'd have one divided by the quantity x minus one. So again, the whole point of doing this is, going back to the original integral, we weren't able to integrate this in its current form, so we performed long division, and then to help us integrate this piece here, we performed partial fraction decomposition, which gave us a sum of these two rational expressions, and hopefully now in this form, we can now integrate. Let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. The antiderivative of three x would be three times x to the second divided by two plus the antiderivative of four would just be four x. To find this antiderivative, we might be thinking we need to perform u substitution, but notice if u is equal to x plus one, then differential u would just be equal to dx. So this fits the form of the integral of one over u du, which is equal to natural log absolute value of u plus c. Because we have a three in the numerator, this would be plus three times natural log absolute value of x plus one. And then for this term here, we'd have plus natural log absolute value of x minus one, and of course plus c. Let's rewrite this one more time. We would have three halves x squared plus four x plus three natural log absolute value of x plus one plus natural log absolute value of x minus one plus c. This would be our antiderivative. I hope you found this helpful.